Hi, in this lesson I want to talk about how as well as using the usual bebop scales and arpeggios, we can sometimes add a bit of variety by using blues scales. Let's start by looking at three pentatonic scales and see how in a way they are related to blues scales. This is a C major pentatonic scale. Like a C major scale but with two notes F and B missing. Now if I play the same notes but start on A we now have an A minor pentatonic scale. Another pentatonic scale is a C pentatonic with a flattened third. Now if we combine the notes of the C major and the C pentatonic with the flattened third, we get this. And that is what we call a C major blues scale. Now, once again, if we play the same notes, but starting on A, we get an A minor blues scale. The A minor blues scale is the one that I used at the end of the introduction. Uh, let's have a look what I actually played in the introduction then. So we started off with a 2-5 progression in the key of C, D minor 7 going to G7. And I started off with the typical arpeggio, the triplet starting on the 3rd of D minor 7 going up to the ninth, And then came back down the arpeggio, chromatic approach note to B, the third of G7. I then used some chromatic notes uh, in a descending scale. And then did an enclosure around E. On the C major seven chord, I played uh, another arpeggio, starting on the third, going up to the ninth. Now you notice in the left hand I'm going from the major 7th to the 6th and I'm kind of implying E minor 7 going to A minor 7 with what I played in the right hand. On the F major 7 chord I did another typical bebop arpeggio again starting on the 3rd approaching it from a semitone below. Now on the B minor 7 flat 5 or half diminished 7s uh, I played a, a G dominant 7th bebop scale. I've talked about improvising over minor 7 flat 5 chords or half diminished 7th chords in another video. I'll put a link in the description below. So I came down the scale until I got to the D and then I did an arpeggio. Now, when I got to E7, that's when I started using the notes of the A minor blues scale. So I went. And then this scale works really well when you're finishing on a minor tonic, in this case A minor, and using that moving line. That's going to the major seventh, minor seventh, and the sixth. Now I'm going to play an example of how we can use a major blues scale on a dominant seventh chord. That was a 2-5-1 chord progression in the key of F major. On chord 2, G minor 7, I started off using five notes from the C dominant seventh bebop scale. So I started on C, carried on down the scale until I got to G and then I went back up just doing a straightforward arpeggio root third fifth seventh now that took me nicely to A which is the 13th of C7 and on the C7 I used the C major blues scale 
So. You can hear how the major blues scale has a different kind of feel to it, to the minor blues scale. If we play a 3-6-2-5 chord progression in C, but make all the chords dominant 7th chords, we can use a C minor blues scale on all four chords, something like this. You see that the one scale works on all the chords. Now, there are some notes that kind of clash a little bit in certain places. For instance, on the G7 chord, the note C itself. But when it's played quite quickly in, in a scale passage, you don't really feel it. Interestingly enough, the C minor blues scale, uh, every single note in it fits an A7 chord perfectly. If we look at an A7 chord, that's straightforward A7. Let's look at the notes of a C minor blues scale. C is the sharpened ninth. E flat is the flattened fifth. F is the flattened thirteenth. F sharp is the thirteenth. G is the seventh. And B flat is the flattened ninth. I hope that's given you some ideas to experiment with. Just a word of caution though, know, I wouldn't overuse the blues scale when you're playing bebop jazz piano. If you use it every now and again, it can provide some real variety and colour to a solo. But if you use it all the time, it starts to sound a little bit monotonous. If you did find the video useful and you haven't done so so far, I'd be really glad if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It helps to get it noticed. And I always welcome any comments or questions that you may have. Thank you. See you in the next video.